Okay, so Bart. Bart has been working for CSIRO IT for 15 years in Canberra. For the last six years, he has worked for the desktop infrastructure team, um, looking after Windows, Linux, Mac um, environments. Um, his responsibilities have included the Linux and Mac SOE, servicing around 1,200 clients and almost 700 Mac OS workstations. Um, Bart's contributed to the monkey code base, um, install and uninstall alerts, and most importantly, the current managed software center icon. Um, Bart's going to be presenting Hacking monkey, monkey for Fun and Profit. So take it away, Bart. All right, thank you. So I got told if I finish early, that's a good thing. Um, I'm probably going to race through this, so uh, we'll see how we go. I've, got, uh, I've kind of timed it, so it's going to be 15 minutes of hacking for fun, and then it's going to be a little bit of uh, hacking for profit at the end, which will be mostly demo, so please demo gods be kind. Um, so as Mark said, I work for the CSIRO. Um, I yeah, have been there for 15 years now. It's a pretty good place to work. Um, supporting for Max kind of started with 10.3, uh, and it was kind of one of those things that was just kind of, you know, you sort of grew into that role. It was like all of a sudden you became the Mac guy. And uh, fortunately, I've been able to call it a, uh, a part of my primary role for the last you know, six years. Um, we use a lot of uh, free and open source software. Uh, so, yeah, lots of Monkey, Monkey Admin. Monkey Admin doesn't you know, report PHP, doesn't have an icon, so you don't have an icon up there. So, um, But, you know, all the usual, uh, usual suspects. Um, the one down the bottom there, Mac OS Laps. Um, I sort of mentioned that. I've had a few people come up and ask what it is. Um, it's uh, so on the Windows side, you have Laps, uh, which is a local admin password solution. So it's a tool for randomizing uh, your local admin password so you don't have the same password on all the machines. Uh, and Mac OS Laps is the Mac OS version of that, uh, which was written by uh, Joshua D. Miller, and that's his GitHub. Uh, Originally, it was a Python script. Um, he's recently rewritten it in uh, Swift, and uh, it's been released as 1.0, which is pretty good. Uh, so we're looking at, uh, at rolling that out. Um, how it will work with uh, if we go for Nomad and with no AD binds or anything like that, we'll see how we go. But uh, yeah, I'm very much all about the free stuff. Uh, now, free is in quotes because it's it's not quite free. I'm not free. Um, <laughs> So, so all these these uh, these open source tools have a have a, uh, a cost associated with them in, in personal time and development and uh, and working on it. But the thing that I like about it is the uh, there's no license restrictions, so I can install them as many machines as I want. I can also see the code, so I can dig in and I can find out how things work. And if I can help, I'll help. If I can fix something, I'll fix it. Uh, if I can do something completely different, it wasn't designed to do, I'll do that as well. Um, so, you know, on the good side, on the bad side, um, generally there's no paid support for this. There's no, you know, onboarding for, for Monkey. You can't get, you know, like JSS, come, you know, Jamf comes in, they'll help you out. Um, so you kind of a little bit on your own, so you kind of got to, you know, know a bit what you're doing. But, uh, yeah, overall it's, uh, it's pretty good and I like the free stuff. Um, so, as Mark said, I've, I actually have made uh, contributions to Monkey. Um, this is uh, more of a, uh, you know, in recognition of the fact that I get to use these tools. Um, I thought it was uh, pertinent to actually, you know, see if I can actually make a contribution, and maybe other people can take event, you know, be able to use that as well. So, uh, originally it started with uh, with Monkey Two before it was even released. Um, uh, Greg was going to release Monkey. Two with the original Monkey One icon, which was very, you know, Yosemite was just coming out at the time with a nice flat look, and it definitely wasn't a flat look, and we sort of made the argument that that's kind of not what it should look like. So, yeah, my original Monkey icons were, uh, yeah, I'm not going to display them here, they're not good. But the d discussion was started, and we ended up, uh, you know, getting a nice icon, which I thought was good. Um, I also uh, have developed the pre install and pre uninstall alerts. I don't know if anyone uses those here, if you're a Monkey user. Yeah, up the back, awesome, great. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the, you know, where you can 
essentially, if you've got an application and you want to warn someone about you know, their use, then uh, that's great. Um, one thing about the, you know, uh, contributing to open source um, is uh, it's, you don't really do it for the, for the kudos and the, uh, you know, the brainy points and all that sort of stuff, but it's kind of nice to, to get a, uh, a little bit of recognition, which is great. Uh, and the pre-install alerts were uh, featured in uh, when Monkey 2, or a bit later on, I think it was in 2015 at the uh, PSU Mac admins. Um, so not only did it was just like, oh, here's a new thing that Monkey does, it was actually a, you know, it was a point slide of the new features and Greg got up and spoke about it and really well. And um, yeah, he sort of said this. Shortly after Monkey 2 shipped, which was like in late September last year, um, somebody uh, added, and the, my, my mind has forgotten who this person is, I think they're from Australia. <laughs> so yeah, so thanks Greg. That actually, yeah. <laughs> He was okay with me letting me play that to you, so I thought that was pretty cool of him. So yeah, so Hacking Monkey for fun. Um, so one of the uh, the first sort of few uh, things that I thought about Monkey was, um, you know, to me it looked a little bit boring. It was just sort of grey icons and like a plain background, and I thought uh, I thought I wonder if I can sort of you know help fix this up a bit, you know. So. That's the you know, monkey interface. If you get it uh, and you install it and you put some apps in there and you push it out to users, that's what they see. Um, now, from my point of view, I sort of looked at it and I went, those install buttons look exactly like the remove buttons apart from the text. Um, and you know, you'd, I'd like to have a bit of a differentiation between you know, what's already on the user system. So I sort of said, hey, how about we change the color of the icons? And Greg said, no. Uh, he'd already tried that and it made it look like a Christmas tree. So, um, I was sort of thought about this, and and I thought, what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll have my own. This is, you know, it's open source. I'll fork it, and then I'll run my own. And so for a little bit, I actually ran my own, and you know, modified the interface to make it look the way I wanted it to look. And that's a pain in the bum because you then have to maintain your own source, and you have to keep it up to date. And then when it's updated, you have to fork it again, make sure your changes don't break everything, all that sort of stuff. So I started looking into uh, ways to modify it. Now, why is that slide blank? It doesn't look pretty blank. Oh, here we go. So, basically what I said. So there's no distinction between what's installed, what's not installed. Yeah, you know, it kind of looks pretty bland. And, like I said, it doesn't look like a Christmas tree for me. <laughs> so, yeah, so I was looking at the code base. Um, thought about it, and I'm thinking, you know, is there a better way to do this? You know, what can I what can I do to to uh, do the changes that I want to do uh, without actually uh, having to maintain my own my own code base? So my goal was to use everything stock monkey uh, without that uh, that requirement to sort of you know you know code maintenance and all that sort of whatnot. So in monkey there is uh, supported uh, method for customizations. You've got these, uh, the showcase template HTML, which shows that banner on the main home page. Uh, the sidebar template, which is that side section uh, on the home page. And the footer template. And uh, all of that is sort of is, uh, you know, uh, documented on the, on the monkey wiki on client customizations. And thing that took interest with me was that the showcase template HTML, um, now that sits on every single page, every single uh, you know, view in uh, Managed Software Center uh, uses this, uh, this HTML. Um, so this one is the showcase template and it does have JavaScript in it and he does say JavaScript at the beginning of the file is left unchanged. We'll see. We can change it, and we do. So this is the this is the uh, that uh, footer template that sits down the bottom of Managed Software Center. You can change the links to to you know make it appear as as you would like. 
Um, so I'm interested in seeing, you know, what can I do with this? Uh, can I put code into that HTML file and make Monkey run it? So we started looking at, uh, well, I started looking at uh, what I can do. So when Managed Software Center runs, it creates a local cache of the HTML that it generates. Uh, it stores it in um, the uh, caches, com.googlecode.monkey.managed.software.center/html, and we can open that up. We can have a look, and you know, we can see what it see what it looks like, and see what sort of uh, whatever things we can do with it. So, so that's generally you know a piece of code that displays something like that. So. All that, uh, all that code is uh, used to, to uh, you know, show the, in this instance, the Photoshop icon. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of divs, there's a lot of classes, um, a few spans, uh, a few links, some images. All these things you can modify with inline JavaScript. Uh, so you can actually, um, you know, you can write something, we'll actually read all those and, and step through them and you know, let's see if we can. Let's see what we can do to change it. So this is the stock uh, footer template HTML that you get. Uh, you can put in as many list items there as you want and fill up the bottom of your your bar. I generally don't. I put in uh, like a help link and a couple of things. It's kind of an area that I've found that a lot of users don't sort of see. Uh, it's kind of hidden down the bottom there. But for our purposes, it's uh, it works really well. And that's what it appears like generally. So, what you could do is you could put all your code in the footer template HTML. Now, that's messy um, for a number of reasons. One is you've got one file with all your code in it. Uh, the second thing is that it's hard to modify. Um, so the the this uh, template HTML is included in a file. Uh, you can call it, I think it's named after, you can name it after the org manifest. Uh, you can name it site default.zip. But uh, every time Monkey runs, it checks to see if this has been updated and it will download it. It will unpack it. And that's kind of uh, useful. But what you don't want it to do is, you know, your monkeys might be running, you know, once every, on average, every two hours. And so if you want to make a change, it's going to take time for that to propagate out. So the easiest way that I find is you just include, you know, if you want to change the CSS, you just include a link to the CSS. Uh, you can then, you know, host that on a, in my case, local host. Uh, you can host that wherever you like and you can modify it whenever you like and you don't have to do a rerun of Monkey. It will display it pretty much straight away. So... A little demo. Let's see if we can get this going. So, we want one of those. And we want, okay, so what I'm going to do, I've got here, I've got my uh, you know, nice uh, CSS, which is sitting on my machine. I've commented everything out. And I'm sort of thinking, what can we do about these button colors? So one thing I do is uh, so I change my install buttons to green. So this gives my users a immediate view of what is not installed on the machine, what's available to install. Um, so if you can see there, I've got. Uh, Got an item there called old background, which doesn't work. Um, that's the standard uh, grey that, that Monkey uses. Um, I've sort of played with um, whether I have the install just happen on hover. If you only do the uh, not installed hover, if you change that to a different colour, uh, what you'll find is you'll get like a little jump. So you have to include the, the base colour anyway. Um, however, that said, I sort of change it to green. Um, Save. I don't know if that saved or not. Let's find out. And we can just do a reload, and all my install buttons turn green. Now, 
So here I can see, oh, I've already got Monkey Admin installed. I've got Recipe Robot installed. You know, that's already installed. Um, but I can see that these items here, they're now sort of a bit more visible. They're a bit more sort of, um, you know, in my mind, they're a bit more user-friendly. Um, you can, of course, change it to any colour you want. Um, you could change the text if you wanted to, and we're going to do that a bit later on. Um, now, any of these items, so the way that I've done this is essentially, because I include that CSS, whatever I put in here, uh, I've gone through the base.css that's in Monkey, uh, found out, you know, what all the, uh, the different items that, he, that, that are in there, and you can just override them, basically. With great power comes great responsibility. And just because you can, doing this backwards is really hard. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. <laughs> it's the 90s again. It's the 90s all over again. I haven't tested to see if you can make it play sounds, but you probably could. Um, one thing you can't do is, uh, well, I haven't got working, so JavaScript alerts and that kind of stuff, like that doesn't work. There's a few um, other things that don't work the way you would expect it if you're running in a web browser, so just be aware of that. Keep it really simple. Don't annoy your users. Don't, oh, hang on a sec. Don't annoy your users. But as you can see, I'm not actually, I'm not actually um, you know, doing a monkey run. I'm just doing a reload on the page. Um, that reload happens, like if you change, you know, if you change to a category view or software view, every time you do that, it does a page refresh. Um, but uh, as we'll see a little bit later on, we'll be able to uh, change the way we do that. So, that's my demo for Hacking Monkey for fun. Uh, pardon? No, that's just the fun bit. Putting hamster dance is fun. It doesn't make you any money though. Uh, so yeah, so just to recap, so essentially we go in, we change these button colors to something else. I put in a little transition, so if I'm going from like a dark color to a light color or whatever it is, I put a little, so it's not just, you know, does a little 0.2 second background color transition there. Um, any CSS is valid CSS, so. You can even put in a gradient if you wanted to, or make it rainbow colours for you know, Pride Day or something, whatever you want to do. And that's how it ends up looking. Uh, now, Hacking Monkey for Profit. Uh, this is uh, a, a bit more towards what I'm aiming for when I do sort of make all these modifications. Changing the colours is one thing, and it's a bit easier and great. Um, in the CSRO, uh, our users um, are part of sort of CSRS's big organisation. Everyone's got their own projects, and each project's got their own project budget. Uh, and we will either buy licences for software, um, but we don't sort of buy one for everyone. So we might buy you know 300 copies of Photoshop or something, or you know. So we don't want to fund that from an IT perspective. We want the users to pay for it, and so we'll ask people to, you know, give us a, a code for their budget and we'll charge them the cost of the software. Um, now, to, originally with my, my Monkey uh, implementation, I had it set up so that um, it would only display apps in the managed software center interface if you had a license for it. So if you didn't have a license for the software, it wouldn't show up. Um, you would have to go to a different page, you would have to put in a request in, the request would go to the service desk, it would get processed there, then the service desk would have to call them up and say, all right, you should be able to see your software now, and then do a refresh, and then it wouldn't work. And I was looking for a much more uh, sort of self-service, you know, don't annoy the IT people unless it sort of breaks. So in a similar way, uh, we can just load in some, uh, some JavaScript. So, I've actually got a link here to some JavaScript which I've called buttons.js because all I really do is manipulate the buttons here. Um, 
demo the second. So I'll show you what I do with the buttons. So we go back here. Now this thing, it requires a little bit of uh, smarts on the back end. Um, so what we need to do is we need to know what applications we're going to modify. We need to know if we're going to charge a price for it. If we click the button, what's it going to do? Are we going to install it or do we need, we need to buy it first? Um, so what we can do, if I go back here to my buttons, I'll just I'm going to comment these two lines. So these two lines, one initiates the load and the other one just sets an interval so that every so often it just refreshes and makes sure that the buttons don't sort of disappear. One thing a monkey does, if you actually do do a monkey, when monkey does run, it doesn't do the onload. So monkey will run, it will refresh the HTML and then you'll get a green install button for this item that you don't you want people to pay for first. So you do these refreshes and now if I do a reload there, no, supposed to work. Oh yeah, save. Reload now. I get these buttons here, and it says, "Oh, Adobe Acrobat purchase thirty bucks, Creative Cloud six hundred bucks." Photoshop doesn't have a uh, a price on it. Interesting. Um, now, similar to the making the buttons green, uh, I want to make a differentiation between you know, which uh, buttons are for purchases and which buttons are for installs. So, let me go back to my CSS. And we shall point out that. Oh, oh, I'll do that anyway. I do a thing where I do a hover over on installed buttons, I make them red. Just so I get that Christmas tree look. So, I'll make those install buttons blue instead. So now you can see green items are free. You can just click install and they install. And blue buttons, they've got a price associated with them. Um, now this is all running off uh, some, uh, this is all running off some PHP I've got running locally. And so this is just running locally. I've got some, uh, yeah, you know, shows me which items I've actually purchased. So I've purchased Photoshop. So it just gives me the install button, doesn't actually tell me that I can do stuff. I've also got a price list. So it's just pulling from database, generating some uh, JSON. You read that in the uh, JavaScript and go populate buttons. I've gone yellow. I didn't think I'd actually get to the Right time, there we go. So, how is this actually working? It's kind of a little bit complicated ish, but essentially, what we do is we read our price list from here, uh, and then we go through and essentially we just step through the document object that uh, the monkey's generated for us. We work out is that button one that we want to modify? If it is, we change it. And I don't know if you can see there, I've actually changed the on click. So instead of now when you click it and it does an install, when I click this, I can say, hey, do you want to purchase this instead? So you've just, I've just redirected to it and that's just a web page. Same thing, it's pulling from a database. So and I can say, yeah, I'd love to purchase that. And now my install button's there. So just like with Photoshop, now I've bought Acrobat and Instead of displaying the blue button, it displays the green button. Um, now, one of the things is, as I mentioned before, Monkey will, oh, I've gone red, Monkey will uh, sometimes wig out a bit and you'll get an install button. So you might want to put something like, you know, do a check to make sure they actually do have a license before doing the install if the user happens to, to hit, that, uh, hit that thing. All right, so, yeah, that's it. Um, that's me, that's my email address at CSRO, that's me on Twitter and Slack, feel free to hit me up for anything like that, and thank you very much.